it's time for a year-end review and I'm excited but I had to set things up in a really weird way so be patient with me okay so here's to hoping this works out I have moved all of my video equipment and everything up into my bedroom where I have a cool little corner over there to do my videos, but because it was a year-end review, I needed a place where I could lay everything out. So I took the little bench that goes at the end of my bed and I turned it into my table. We're just gonna do this one uh, sitting on the floor. I hope you don't mind. But the good news is that when I moved all this stuff around, look what I found. I love this little Winchester knife and I've always kept it in my purse because, well, to be quite honest, I use it for cutting apples, but I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I thought it was gone. I was really sad. And I just found it when I was rearranging to do this wonky video setup. So yay. It feels so tiny back here. I feel like a little kid. We are at the tail end of our ninth well, it was the tail end of our eighth year. So we've about finished our eighth year of homeschooling and it was awesome. So I was gonna do a year end review, like, you know, like you'd expect me to, but then Valerie over at our homeschool castle invited me into a collaboration of year end reviews and I jumped on board with that. So hopefully when you're done watching this video, you will jump over to Valerie's channel, check out her year end review, and she'll have a playlist of all the other people that are putting theirs out. And this is a great time to get a glimpse at a variety of curriculum, which is why we're here, right? So you can find what works for you. What I have in front of me right now is roughly what I had said in the beginning of the year we were going to use for our fifth and seventh grade homeschool year. Now that has changed through the year. It adjusted as we do. I'm kind of in a funny situation because we are a blended family. My homeschooler's biological father gets a say in what curriculum we use. Basically, I just have to uh, get his thumbs up once I pick out what curriculum I wanna use and let him know when there are changes. You know, for people who are in a blended family that co-parent really well together, isn't a big deal. That's not us. So changing curriculum can be quite challenging. Choosing curriculum can be quite challenging because some people like to be difficult. Anyway, you guys don't wanna hear about all that. So if I have a curriculum that works okay for us, I tend to stick with it, even if it's not ideal, just to avoid that drama. However, I would encourage you to use a curriculum that you love. And if you don't love it, leave it. There's always another curriculum out there. There are so many available, particularly in the secular homeschooling world. It is growing every day. So hopefully this will give you some ideas of some of the things that are out there. And I'll let you know how they worked for us, whether it was a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or a, nah, we stuck with it, but there's probably a better option. Guys, I'm too short and I'm uncomfortable. So I'll be right back. Do you remember when we were kids and we could sit like anywhere in any position, the weirdest positions, and it was fine? Well, spoiler alert, I'm not a kid anymore and my body's very picky about what I do with it. Otherwise it gets cranky. Where to start, where to start? I'll start with what's right in front of me. In this pile in the middle, I have what I intended to use for the prisoner for her seventh grade year. We will go through this. We'll start with lightning literature. Lightning literature, grade seven. Uh, if you recall from my intro to the year video, she skipped grade six, went to grade seven. This has worked amazingly for her. It's been great. She's done really well with the self-directed learning and she's just making her way through here like a champ. She loves it, I love it, we're sticking with it. So next year, it is still lightning literature for her for ninth grade. She's actually gonna jump past eighth grade and go directly to the ninth grade materials. If you're interested in what we're using for our ninth grade materials, please check out our video, which I already put out, of our curriculum plan for next year. Next for her, I've been trying to do some more self directed learning, some more follow your passions. She loves photography. And so I got this camera quest book 
from The Thinking Tree. I was really excited about these books. And this one was a big flop. She didn't want to use it. It basically just filled a space. I don't know if I, I glanced through here. I don't think she's used it at all. Oh, nope, there we go. There's a small bit of writing in here. And my dogs have jumped the gate and are now scratching my door. Should I let them in? They're gonna make a mess. No, they can stay out there unless they get too crazy. Anyway, <sighs> nothing against this curriculum. I think it's fabulous, but she just wasn't into it. She still did photography. She did take an out school course on starting your own photography business and everything. She's always taking pictures. There they are again. And so, you know, sometimes you try and capitalize on their passions or their personal interests and they're like, hey mom, I just kind of want to do it my way. I don't want to have to turn it into a curriculum and that's okay. So this one was a no go. Next we have, it's perfectly normal that we were using for our health. We've slowly been making our way through this book. We have not used it as much as I thought we would because it's kind of like a side note item but I still really like it. Um, so I would say it is a success. It's doing what we need it to do. We just didn't dig into it as deeply as we thought we would. So it's a ha eh, to a yay, depending on how you want to look at it. Our next plan for the prisoner individu individually was this one. This is her math, pre-algebra. This was a no-go. Now, the reason why this was a no-go is because it was just a little bit too challenging for her. She actually really liked the format of this book and we will be using this book next year. But because it was a little bit challenging for her, we try, we decided to take a step back and do Beast Academy level five instead. Beast Academy level five is their highest level and is the one that leads into the pre-algebra book. I did buy the materials for Beast Academy level five, but what we ended up using was their online program. So now I have a bunch of Beast Academy printed materials. And while I love the books, I'm glad I bought the guides, the practice books where they actually have the problems to complete, we haven't used it all. And so that happens sometimes with curriculum. You buy it, you love it, but it just doesn't get used. But their online little program has been getting used and we will continue to use it next year. If she doesn't finish level five before the end of the year, I told her we're just gonna keep going until level five's done. And then when she's done with that, we'll transition to the pre-algebra art of problem solving. A couple items that she added or we added, number one, I added and it was um, handwriting without tears, cursive success. We needed to work a little bit more on our handwriting, a little more focused time on that. And so I really do like the handwriting without tears options. That's worked really well as an addition. And then she added this, she found out about this magazine called The Week Junior, and she gets one every week. And I haven't spent a lot of time looking at it, but she gets really excited about getting it in the mail. And she loves, she'll read the whole thing cover to cover. And there's so many interesting little tidbits in here. And so I love that she's really into this. She also, decided that she wanted to get back into doing the piano. She's been jumping into piano for our foreign language. For both of the girls, I got a program called Lingo Pi, which is basically they're just like little videos that you can watch like you were watching a TV show, but it's in your language of choice. And so she's continued to work on French. She talked about wanting to take an actual accredited online French class for next year but then she decided maybe not. So that's kind of in the works right now on whether or not she decides to do that. It's really up to her. But other foreign language, where is it? Hold up, give me a second guys. American Sign Language. I've got this book, which has been great because I am learning more American Sign Language and the prisoner has decided to learn it with me, which I'm very excited about. We're enjoying doing that together. I feel like not only is it educational, and she's learning another language, but it has given her and I kind of our little way to communicate that not everyone else knows what's going on, which when you have your 12 year old going on 30 is great to, I don't know, strengthen those bonds. Yay for sign language. Now, 
let's look at Bean Bean's short little stack. All right, here's some of the materials that we plan to use with Bean Bean this year. That was Beast Academy for math. It's worked out splendidly. We love it. She's really loving, by the way, Lingo Pie instead of Rosetta Stone. So that's really working for her for her Spanish. But she also, for Beast Academy, has spent more time doing their online program than their printed program. So I've got a whole nother stack of printed materials that we're not really using, but she really loves the guides with the comic books. She will just sit there and read them for the heck of it. So there's a win. Next, let's see. I feel like I'm missing something for her, but I can't think of what it is, but we'll just jump in. We took a break from lightning literature with her because I felt like she needed more time to focus on the composition and writing. Personally, I feel like lightning literature has a strong enough composition piece to it, but it maybe was a little bit too intense for her. She's more of a, a reluctant writer. And so she had been working, let's see, last year she completed grade five of lightning literature and she's in grade five this year. And so she was, let's see, fourth, yeah. So she was um, working a little bit ahead and she understood the concepts. It was just the writing, the composition piece for her was making her not enjoy it anymore. So I decided we would take a year off of that. We jumped into Write Shop Junior so that next year we will go back to Lightning Literature grade six when she's in grade six. Now, this one, she really likes. She'll give it a thumbs up. The way that this is formatted is definitely more fun for the kids. I don't like it. And so it, it's a struggle. Part of me wanted to keep using it because she likes it, but I need to keep in mind what works for both of us. This one is very parent reliant. It really requires me to be with her for her to do it. Now, I don't want to just step back and not be available to my children. That's not what I'm saying. I am available to them and I want to help them and we do some things together, but I also want if I'm going to go sub in the classroom for the day, or I have something I need to do, it's important to me that they can do their work independently. And this doesn't really allow for that. And so it didn't work for us. If you wanna get in hands, hands on with your child, you have a younger child, or you just have one child you're doing one-on-one -on -one with, this is a great curriculum. That it for sure, I definitely would suggest it if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for a more independent learner, things they can do on their own, I would, probably skip this one. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to finish it up this year, this last month of school that we have or so, and then we're going to be done with it and we'll go back to lightning literature. Now she has for health her, it's so amazing. This is the same thing as with the prisoner. We haven't used it as much as I had originally intended to, but we have used it. And when we use it, it's great. So I love it. This one is a thumbs up. We also, where is it? Aha, for both the girls, but particularly for Bean Bean, I got this Be Healthy, It's a Girl Thing. I was really excited about this book. Now, I didn't like it so much once we got into it. We're not even halfway into it. And I was just like, I don't even know that we wanna keep doing this. So this one was a no-go. We probably won't even finish the book. We're definitely not continuing with it next year. So instead we've created her own little personal health journal so that we can work on health and fitness on a one-on-one -on -one basis where she's at and work from there. Cause we, as a family are all trying to get up and out of the house a little bit more. I wouldn't call us couch potatoes, but I'm not really an outdoorsy person. So we're going to try and do better about that. One of the ways we're going to do that is by trying to visit all of the state parks in Washington. I had a great resource for that. You can see it in my plan for our what will it be? Sixth and ninth grade years for next year. And it's just a Washington Parks Adventure book. This one, her personal interest was baking, is baking. She still loves to bake. This one's a lot thicker than the Prisoner's book, but it mostly hasn't gotten used. She saw part of it. One of the things in here was you can watch a show about baking, which is fine, but then what she does is she watches a show about baking and she doesn't want to write anything down about her or anything. I'm not going to make her do it. So unfortunately, again, two for two, the thinking tree was a flop at our house. I don't see anything wrong with this curriculum. I really like the way it's put together, but it just didn't work for my kiddos. So that one's a no-go. We also added 
and writing without tears for her because she needed a little bit more handwriting intentional time and so this one is also in cursive and that has been really helpful to improve the handwriting skills let's see let's look at these these were things that we were intending to do as a group history of us always a thumbs up from me we worked our way through this a lot more slowly than we intended to but that's okay all that means is that we really got more in depth with it which i love and so still loving the history of us materials we will continue it for next year that is definitely a go ultimate geography and timeline guide i dug this one out off of my shelf when i was kind of doing some spring cleaning stuff last year and it's been a great resource for us this year as we try and delve into learning all the different countries and the capitals and where they're at, all that kind of stuff. So this one we'll continue to use. This is a K through 12 resource. I will probably always have it on my shelf and have it part of what we're doing. The story of science is what we started off doing for science. It has these student books and the teacher guide. Long story short, I dropped the teacher guide I dropped the student book and we just stuck with the textbook. If you want more information on that, I did do a full review of this in another video. But for the purpose of this video, this book I will continue to use. I really liked it. It worked great for us. These books were a waste of my time and my money because they didn't work for us. I don't actually really just like, I don't even like them enough to say, hey, but you might like them. I mean, you might like them, but I don't know. These were these were a definite flop. Thumbs down on those. Thumbs up on this one. Now, for science for next year, Bean Bean has decided she wants to do Generation Genius, which is an online science program that I don't even remember where I heard it from, but I was loving it. So we did a, a free trial with them for a period of time where she could check it out and she's really excited to continue using it for next year. I'm a little bit nervous about how much of our stuff has gone online with having her science online and her math online. That's a lot of screen time potentially, but right now I'm just kind of going with it. Crash course has been a huge part of our homeschool all year long. We've been loving that. I did start a book club at the beginning of the year to encourage the kids to engage with some other kids. That one, Bean Bean ended up not being so interested in it. The Prisoner is loving it, but there's only a couple other kids that have been really engaging with it. So if it's done next year, it's going to be kind of the Prisoner's personal project. So she can continue to connect with the kids through book club and read books that they choose, but I will not be putting time into that. I found that I just don't have the time and energy to set all of that up. And if she really wants to do it, then she's more welcome, more than welcome to continue it. So let's see, Crash Course, Book Club, Generation Genius, Tinker Crates and Eureka Crates. We did continue with those this year. As always, they're a hit, the kids love them. I ended up getting them two separate crates instead of a shared crate because the prisoner was ready for something a little bit more challenging while Bean Bean wanted to stick with the Tinker Crates. And we started Mel's Science Chemistry this year. Next year, I don't know if we'll continue with the chemistry. To be honest, we love it. So two thumbs up for Mel's science. But I think because the prisoner is going to be doing physics for one of her high school credits, I'm just going to get the Mel science physics kit because I really like their kits. And so I trust that the other kit will work well for that. I already mentioned we switched to Lingo Pie. I do still have Rosetta Stone that the prisoner uses a little bit more than Bean Bean. But here's a few things that we started using unexpectedly that I really like. Number one, origami. The kids have been loving doing origami and I'm like, yes, why not? What a great hands-on math activity. This one, our country's president, because it goes along with History of Us as we come across new presidents in History of Us, we've been delving into and learning more about those presidents so the girls know all the presidents in order and know a little bit about each of them. That's another reason why History of Us has taken us longer because we've kind of gone off on these little offshoots, but that's fantastic because we've learned so much more by doing that. Now, we went on vacation not too long ago and I found these fantastic puzzles. It's fine art collection. This one's uh, the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. We did a little bit of a study about Leonardo da Vinci. He was mentioned in something else we were working on. 
And so then we did a little bit of a art research on the Mona Lisa, the study of the Mona Lisa. As you guys might know, because I've said it a million times, art is really not my thing. It's not really my area of expertise, but I'm excited about these puzzles, hands-on, math, art study, all that kind of stuff. A few things that we added into our home that have worked great. We do have a new art cupboard and an art table that has been smashing and the kids love it. We've also tried to do some more, they're scratching at my door. Hold on guys. I think my puppies are more disruptive than my children. Hi honey. This is Kita and she really wanted my attention. Apparently she wants to be the center of my attention because she, oh, what's that? Do you hear the dog barking? Now, Sassy knows you're in here. Come on, get down. And she knocks over my camera. Anyway, welcome to my life of trying to get things done with four dogs and five kids. Although there are no children home right now, so I had thought that I was gonna be able to do this uninterrupted. This big kid over here had other plans. Anyway, totally lost what I was saying. Oh, art table. We love it. STEM activities, we've done some tearing things down. Mystery activities have been a great hit in our house. And all in all, I would say this year of having a more child-directed approach, we had some great materials as a baseline to start with. We tried kind of a new schedule and a new way to present things. And it has worked really well. We will definitely be holding on to a lot of this for next year. I'm excited about the materials we have for next year, but as always, we're learning how to go with the flow. We're learning how to follow our passions. We're learning how to just let the kids kind of take the lead a little bit as independent learners. Why are you on the table? Kita, get down, ding dong. Thank you. So, lay down. Yeah, no, I see you. Anyway, I hope that answers your questions about our year end review. We're excited with this year. We're definitely continuing with homeschooling for next year. That will be our ninth year homeschooling. Wow, that's a lot of years. And I'm really excited to be able to do this. So from Kita and myself, I'm so glad you joined us today. If you want to see more about our homeschool and all of the things that go on in this crazy house, Check us out on Instagrams at homeschool happy hour. And until then, I will catch you next time. What do you want? I'm not, nope, you can't use me as a stool. Here. Use that as, there you go. Use the stool as a stool. Stretch. You're such a good girl. Kita, look, you're a pretty princess. You're on camera. Can you get down so I can turn my camera off? I'm so sorry I was in your way. All right. Bye, guys.